Hey, what's up everybody? Ed the Palm Professor here. I am coming to you from Perryville, Missouri, the home of Semco Stone, and this is where it's at. I'm telling you what, this is an incredible facility. I've been here a couple times before. Actually, Greg Whitstock, the pond guy and I, we came out here about a dozen or so years ago looking to pick out some incredible stone that we use over at the Extreme Pond Build right at our headquarters in St. Charles, Illinois. I am here to pick out some really cool rock for an upcoming project. Actually, I got two of them. One of them is gonna be on the outskirts of Omaha, Nebraska, the other is going to be right at our office. Let's go check it out. <laughs> All right, check it out. We are at ground zero here at Semco Stone, Perryville, Missouri. Everywhere you look, as far as you can see, all directions, we have an incredible selection of stone out here. I'm going to have a blast here picking out the rock for this upcoming project. My mind is racing with all the different possibilities of what we have to work with with these raw materials. Check out some of these that we are picking out. We got a bunch of them. You can see all these little green tags way over here. But check out this one right here. So what I like about this one is we got this nice little flat ledge right here. And then we have a high edge right next to it. So that actually could be like the frame of our waterfall. So if we come in here and get another big rock on this side, this would be an easy way to create that waterfall effect and all this moss and all that stuff is going to continue to grow. Also looking at big giant blocky type pieces for around the outside perimeter as well as flanking and creating that really high stack waterfall effect that we're trying to create. Just look at that. This is a perfect rock that's going to go right on the edge of the pond. I can see the kids kind of walking around on this, transitioning over into the water. I could stand this up or lay that down. That would be our top right there it's gonna be perfect along the edge of the pond nice smooth surface transitioning down into our water get our water level right over in this section and I could also envision what it's gonna look like once we get plant material over on the back side of that now you can see some of this moss is starting to get a little bit dried out but uh, that's just because it's here in a hot dry dusty location as soon as you get that back near water that moss is going to come back to life it's unbelievable how resilient that stuff is so the challenge that we have to to deal with as water feature designer is we're always thinking of different shapes we're looking for different textures we're looking for um, how we, everything's going to fit into a three-dimensional space so we have to look at things more in layers so it's very difficult I mean, it just takes a lot of experience because you can do a drawing all you want but a drawing is going to be a two-dimensional rendition where we're working in a three-dimensional world so we have to kind of work in between those two realms in order to really pull it off and it takes like I said years of practice I did not start 27 years ago setting big rocks like this I started with smaller stone they're easy to manipulate you could pick them up you could move them around very easily but you start thinking of different shapes and how they actually interact together once you understand the dynamics of those smaller stones then you could start moving up into medium and larger stones but when you start getting in stones like this it can become a very expensive mistake if you don't know what you're doing choices here literally are endless you know so many different possibilities so we kind of have to stay a little bit focused in order to make it all work just tagged 70 pallets uh, of material and then I have a couple truckloads of loose material as well now what I want to do just wrapped up picking out all of our stone I want to go out in nature and go actually see where these actual stones come from Gosh, this is a place called Elephant Rock State Park. That this is all Missouri granite. I knew they had granite here, but not on this magnitude or scale. This is really, really cool. Just check this stuff out. You just get this big monolithic wall popping up over here. You know, craggy stuff and little pockets and things like that. Kids running all through here. Just unreal. Really, really cool. This has got all that lichen growing on it. This usually makes the conditions better for more mosses. So the lichen actually will attach themselves to the rock and actually will start to dissolve it. I love looking at this stuff because it just gives me tons of ideas. You know, just the way rocks are positioned. I mean, look at that. You got trees growing out of some of these crevices and things like that. But you know, I, 
we're always really particular on how we place our rocks. You know, we try to line up joints and things like that. But if you look at some of this stuff, you're going to see spaces and things like that in between them. And you'll see kind of erratic rocks just kind of hanging out there in different places. So after the site visit, um, I did a few sketches actually on the job site, just to try to get my thoughts laid out. And then I took all that information, I fine tuned it. And then from there, I sent it to Sasha in our Canadian office where she actually put this beautiful rendering together to show some of the details on the upcoming project. So let me take you on a little bit of a journey as we walk through all this stuff. So I always start out kind of right over here. Let's start out over at the patio location because that's obviously existing patios there. We know exactly where the family room is located and we also know where the kitchen is located so we could figure out all those different viewing areas and I think that's an important piece. So once we have those views taken into consideration starting over here at the patio we're going to start to lay everything out. What I loved about this design was we're working with the elevation. This was already a little bit of a slightly elevated area kind of located in here just a couple feet above this section of the pond. So I wanted to work with the elevations that we already had. There's also a little bit of a ridge kind of following around over in this section as well that was a little bit higher um, so all this was a little bit built up so once I knew where the pond was gonna be which obviously it's gonna come right up next to the patio we want to have plenty open areas so we want to have a little bit of a bridge crossing right over here leading us over to uh, there's like a little tree house as well as a turf area that's located up in this section on the other side of the bridge is going to be a little bit of a decorative pool just to kind of really tie everything together this is also going to be the location for our pumping system which is an external pumping system it's going to lo be located right on this outside edge so now as people are come driving up they're actually going to see a little bit of the this, uh, pond as they start coming into view is a little bit of a walkway that connects up over here and then as we continue going around just started making a really cool free form shape to this pond I had to figure out where the wetland filter was gonna go so the wetland filter is uh, an important piece it's responsible for detoxifying the water so we needed a 20 foot by 20 foot wetland filter area so once I had that main pond area laid out so again, I wanted to try to use a, a 50 foot by 100 foot rubber liner. So that means I was gonna go, this pond had to be a maximum of 80 feet wide, or 80 feet long. So from here, all the way to the other side of the intake bay was gonna be 80 feet. So this way I can get away with that large rubber liner. We could lay all that stuff out in here and then that would make everything work for us. So our maximum width over here is gonna be about 35 feet. So I love just kind of creating um, unique shapes, but you don't want anything really crazy. You don't wanna have stuff going all over the place in little pockets and coves and little weird spots like that. Because when you start doing that, um, you get bad circulation. So what I wanna have is just some really nice big open sweeping areas just to allow for a large swimming zone. The other thing that I wanted to do is we, we added in this little seating area over here. So this was gonna be an extension coming off of the main patio. So this was actually gonna be a small deck area. The reason I wanted that was to actually have that connection with the water. So they had an existing patio, and it's one thing to have the water come right up next to the patio, which looks beautiful. But when you're sitting actually on a deck, when you have that dock-like feeling and you could hang your feet in the water, it completely transforms you. It actually, it looks like a, a small dockside lake. The other thing that we wanted to have happen was I wanted to create a beautiful view. So what I loved about this was if you look from the left or from the right you're just basically going to see a big expanse of water kind of stretching out right in front of you we set up a couple jumping rocks where the kids could actually climb up to a higher elevation and i'm not talking eight or ten feet or anything like that probably about three feet above water level so it's a nice little rocky outcropping you could jump off into the water and then the other
other thing I wanted to do is create a little bit of a swim behind cave, which is actually, I kind of have a little picture of what we wanted that to look like over here. So we wanted to have something that was gonna be interactive, but it was also gonna be very natural. Their whole thought was they didn't want to invest in a swimming pool because the swimming pool season in Nebraska is relatively small. So we wanted to create something that was beautiful and functional 365 days a year. The other unique thing about this particular project was we were going to have a higher elevation way over here. And the reason we wanted to do that was there was some new homes that are gonna be built way back over in this section over here. So we wanted to create some screening for this property. So by building up a large berm and having a higher elevation, seven feet or more above the level of the pond, that's gonna create just an incredible view. So if you're standing over here on this patio and if you're looking straight out, you're gonna be looking right at a waterfall. This is gonna create an incredible backyard environment. All right, guys, uh, Greg and I are, are out in Bellevue, Nebraska right now. We're checking out the location where we're gonna be doing this uh, large swimming pond. Uh, here's the back of the home. We are standing right now in a tree house. Right over here, we got a beautiful view of everything from above. Uh, what we have is the main pond is gonna be located right over in here. It's gonna be like a deep stream going across and then intake bay and everything way over in this corner. We're gonna take the water, we're gonna disperse it up into here. We're gonna have a series of waterfalls. The idea is to shelter some of this. They had a uh, tornado that came through and it knocked down some of the trees, but we still have some tree line here, but there's gonna be some homes built on the back side. So we wanna build up this elevation, have a big waterfall coming down into an upper pool, then another waterfall coming down into the main pond. Wetland is gonna be tucked right over into this corner here. Really cool site. 